Here we are with a fantastic piece of software, Luma Fusion. Now this is video editing software for iPad and it's just fantastic. It's actually quite easy to use. Now I'm an amateur filmmaker, but I'm a professional musician and I do lots of audio recording. And actually this tune here, Mr. Sandman that I've done on video, I'm gonna show you a bit about the program and also how to use the audio tracks as well. Now, we've got our main working screen here. You can see the track at the top if I just play a bit of it. So we've got the main screen at the top right, and then we've got our sort of working space in the middle here. Now, first things first, things like files, how do you drag your videos in and your audio and all that? The answer is it's all above here. So if I say, well, if I want this little piece of video, which is where I did my knee slap at the beginning, I've got a basically a, a sort of a file. It's like a um, sort of, you know, it's your standard file hierarchy. You see all your files and then you can drag those in. Now, if I look at my main working space here, you can see green files here and blue ones. The blue ones are the video and the green ones are the audio soundtrack. So if I want to drag a piece of video in, for example, let's, let's go to the end just to be safe. We've got five video tracks that you can drag things onto, five actual tracks, which is a lot, that is a lot. You'll find that you don't really need all of that amount, especially if you're cutting from one to the other, uh, one picture to the other. So if I just grab this, uh, this little bit of video here, as you can see, it has its own little timeline, which allows you to select things. So I'm um, a uh, select a part of it. So I'm actually gonna take only a little bit of it. And you get a little telltale um, sort of thing in here showing how much of it you've actually, you're actually going to um, take. So just a tiny amount, let's do that. Once you've done that, you then go back to your picture and you drag it in. And there you go. You can actually see, see it's very, very small. If I zoom in, it's only five frames, which is tiny. So if I go back and play that, it was just a little flickery bit. So that's how you get stuff in. Now you can extend, you can see there's two little arrows here, you can extend the video footage um, and then you can move it with respect to the other bits and pieces that you've got there. Now, as with everything, and this includes, you know, if you're working in GarageBand, for example, and I did all the audio recording on GarageBand for this as well, using the Zoom IQ6 mic for just extra fidelity, you need basically a track to work to so that all of your audio links up and the same goes for your video. So what I've got actually got here is my main track in the video here is actually the four vocals. You can see the four, the four versions of me at the top there. If I drag the iPad down slightly, there we go. That's a bit better. You can see those four versions of me there doing the, the four parts. Now, I had to do a little bit of jigging about to make this work. And the answer is I actually made the vocal tracks into one video file that then I re-imported into this one. And that's really important. It's a bit like bouncing in audio terms. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to actually, with the button at the bottom left here, is I'm going to show you my vocal take and how I put that together. Now I actually mined the vocal parts to this um, because I'd done all the recording and I thought, well, I've, I don't wanna be faffing about with mics or anything while I'm doing the video, so I will mime. So I just had it coming out of a speaker. So um, if I go into this now, you can see that there are four tracks here and then I've got a video soundtrack as well. Uh, sorry, an audio soundtrack. Now that audio there, that was actually the camera audio. And for some reason, the mic didn't work in the camera. So I thought, oh no, how am I gonna drag this? How am I gonna watch my lips move and drag this to all fit together? And actually the answer was the final note. Now I did do a sort of a, a, a click at the beginning just to give myself four beats in, but that wasn't reliable enough because I couldn't see the click um, in the camera. Whereas I, the last note of this goes, Bum, and I thought, okay, I can see that. I can, I think I can probably work that out. So if I go all the way to the end and then 
very carefully zoom out. Now, of course, being an iPad, you can accidentally drag stuff when you're only meaning to move it in the time domain. But what I had here, if you look at the um, look at the video here, there was one instance. Here it is. There we go. Where I just had that last note, and you can see all those four vocals going bump at the end, and that's how I cut those. Uh, videos to be exactly exactly at the same time. Now I use this background and I use the phone. So you're watching this on an iPhone 5. So what I did was I had the camera set up and I stood over here for the one part, then I moved a bit for the second part and then the third part and the fourth part like that. And then cut them afterwards. Now transferring stuff to here is easy. You just do, if you've got um, your iPhone, you can just airdrop it straight to your iPad and then it appears in your left-hand window here. So I think, uh, yes, there's my um, various things that I, I dragged in. So if I, there we go, there's my fourth part there that I used. Uh, I think that was the third one. Yeah, and the second one, etc. Now I did, did actually have to do some retakes because there was a shiny bit on my hat. Now, don't do this. If you want to have the sort of camera trickery of four different things, don't do it during the day because any slight changes in ambient light levels, so sun or the cloud comes across or whatever, it's gonna change all the colors and all the exposure of your camera. And also if you're using an iPhone, and on video, click and hold the screen so that you get an auto exposure uh, lock, an auto focus lock. That just keeps everything nice and tidy. So just going back to this, you can see that there's a little there's a little gap between one and two there, which are uh, hmm, not sure about that. So if I double click on one of the video tracks and then go to frame and fit, which is this button, which is actually by default on and go to cropping, you can see that I've actually had to crop all of these things so that they can all play at the same time. Because if I had this, as you can see, it's only showing me my first angle. So you can crop the right hand side until you're in roughly the right place. Now you can do this, of course, for the other tracks and for the, my second vocal, wherever that is, there we go. Now I accidentally dragged something then, so you've got to be very careful with this, that you don't accidentally do something and then you're thinking, oh, why isn't it working? And then you try and undo and then you, of course you lose all your steps. So there's the second one, same thing, cropped like that. Now, what I did then with these four parts was to export it. There's a little arrow symbol at the bottom right here, which allows me to export this as a movie. So if I click movie, I want to keep it inside the iPad rather than sending it off anywhere else. Of course, you could use the iCloud if you're running low on memory, but I just sent it to photos. So if I do that, you get a, then a sort of big dialogue box. You think, Ooh, um, and there's all sorts of settings. Ideally, keep the video quality, the resolution, this, the 1080p, as high as you can. Don't make it any higher than the camera resolution because there's no points, just extra memory for no gain. Um, 30 frames per second is default Apple iPhone videoing, keep that. Video quality standard, audio quality 44.1 kilohertz. The audio quality, because I've used a GarageBand audio file, it's not actually relevant anyway. Uh, and then you just click that button again and it exports. You can choose your file format to be um, a dot move file, which is like a quick time thing. Um, you can, if you've got your um, 360 degree virtual reality, you can do that, it's great. Okay, so if we go back to there, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come out of this and go back to my main working space. There we go, there it is. And all the other videos that I've done there. And if I click on it once again, it'll then open the main Mr. Sandman. Here is now a mix of my vocal parts. So if I double click on that, you can see that it opens up this window of just the four of me. You can see other things here, which is basically other bits in the video. If you don't want to see those, you can just click the solo button, which will allow you only to see the four faces there. And that's quite useful. Although you don't want to solo things out too much because you want to see things in context and how it's going to look on the screen. Now, if I go to cropping, you can see that I've actually cropped the bottom 
up like that because actually there's a few little interfered bits where you can see the definite divisions um, and also I wanted other stuff to come underneath it so I'll just select the the bottom to come up there like that now I've also um, elected to have a little bit of softness at the edges so it's not a sharp line at the bottom and that's these controls here if I just take the edge softness away you can see that there's a direct there's a definite bottom line but if you just crank it up a bit you can get a bit of a, a nice blend with the other pictures which is what I did and then the corner radius that essentially just it it decides your um, decides how much vignette you get so size and position you can change the size of the overall image or you can place it on the screen which is really important so I could place I could put my faces anywhere left to right and anywhere I could stick them at the bottom if I like it's so immensely powerful it's unbelievably powerful and you have undo steps at every stage of the way stage of the game there we go and I'll just bring the other images back like that so if I go back to my main window now I've got other things other video things um, here this one here this is the garage band um, sort of screenshot that I took with my iPad and I had that playing in the background so it once again if I click solo now my faces have gone and you can see the iPad instead now at this stage I'm going to show you a few of the effects that you can apply we've got the four main buttons here frame and fit which is where you place everything you crop things you make it sort of a nice corner radius the second one allows you to change the speed of your video now of course I don't want to do that because I'm syncing everything to an audio track. Now you can also change things like the audio level or, or of that um, particular camera. Again, I've used the GarageBand, so I'm not going to use this. But you have some various audio processing things like EQ and compression. That's really useful if you just need to tweak something. But the right hand side, color and effects. Now you don't want to go too mad with your effects because it can look really sort of confused on the page if there are lots of flashing and different colors and all of this sort of stuff and actually when you when you do look at this i am guilty of it however you can see that you can get various sort of um various settings polaroid gives you a sort of slightly different um sort of photographic thing and then you have all the settings that are associated with that particular plugin um you can decide with this eye here you can decide to compare it with the original or you can get rid of it completely there we go um, there are other types of things here you've got all sorts of plugins that are developed you can get some free sort of plugins for people sort of doing various settings and you can also store your favorites using the star symbol at the end here uh, or rather you store it there and then you can recall them at the end so you can have things like uh, thermal Ooh. Mm. yeah nice um, and you can also blend the effect in so you can either elect to have it completely unaffected or you can bring the effect in gradually the possibilities are frankly endless and that's the great thing about this it's just fantastic so good x-ray color edges you can just play with play to your heart's content angles nice and then you can also play things back boom, boom. Mr. Sandman. trippy now I'm going to get rid of that because I don't really want that so if I go back to my main space now I've had to put the iPad as you can see it's very faint in the background there and I've got things like the piano keyboard and garage band I've got other things like the bass the bass line that I've put in uh, which has got the if I just double click on that um, I played the double bass on GarageBand for this. So if I solo that out, you can see just the bass only. Now, of course, I had to drag everything to fit and dragging things around to fit the audio soundtrack. That does take a little bit of doing. But when you're in your main space here, you've got... Um, Oh, just click unclick solo. There we go. It won't let you go back to the main space unless you unsolo that. Um, you have to 
be very careful when you drag things and you've got a little uh, just above my finger there is a, a little clock which tells you where you are now notice that it goes 0.27890 oh. that's the 30 frames so 20.29 is actually one frame under 21 seconds in now you can as i said before you can change the length of your tracks when you import them you can do you can do it after you can also put fades in now if i just go forward to one of the there we go i've got um that little keyboard that came in there that keyboard i was i mind that i just put the d d d d of the of the little xylophone in there uh, the marimba so either side of it you can see this purple shape called cross dissolve now this is where you get your transitions if we go to the flower at the top if we go to transitions you can put all sorts of fades and and stuff between camera angles now the one i mostly use is cross dissolve you know i'm, I'm not such a fan of all the sort of in your face ones like sort of sun, something that sort of grows out of the screen and or a circle that draws the new picture i'm not really a fan of that but you can get them all here and what you do is you just go to here and drag one onto the space and then you can vary the length of that transition by simply dragging oh I drag the whole lot then undo that by dragging the transition <laughs> now this is the problem when it's a bit fiddly with garage band like this there we go you can drag the transition so that there's less of a fade before the piano or more and then there's a fade at the end as well and it knows automatically whether to do a fade out or a fade in depending on if you put it at the end or at the beginning so just working through is a few other things oh that, that was this is where i got a little bit it looks like the grinch uh if i just double click on that you can see that i've got a very green face there i just went a bit overboard with my effects sorry but again you can work on that itself and if i just uh, unsolo that and go to the cropping you can see that i just cropped around my face but with a little bit of um the edge softness around the side again so if i just took that all the way off i'd end up with a sort of um i'd end up with my slightly startled expression whereas if it's just mixed in like that it's just a bit nicer it just blends in so just looking further forward what have we got here oh yes now when the drums come in what I did was I just um, made a a little screenshot of just the drums playing on GarageBand. Mr. Sandman, bring me just to show that it was the, the drums that I'd used and it was actually one of the loops. Unsolo that and of course I can make that prominent or I can move it. You know, if I wanted to uh, move this about uh, size and position, there we go. Position X, X is that axis and Y is that one. So if I, for example, I can do that, just move it about position Y, move it about there. And of course I can undo everything that I did before. And there we go, we're back to, back to normal. So and a blending. Now, blending, what that does is it makes it, decides whether it's um, completely opaque or, in fact, you've got this sort of um, faded version. That can be quite nice. This It's so, so unbelievably powerful, this, that you can, you can get very lost in it. Um, so the working space that we have here, it's, this is, I've got used to it quite quickly and, well, it's, you know it's the whole sort of ipad thing it's just very fluffy and and works very nicely indeed so if i just go back here you can see now that my drums are a little bit more faded in my main mix um, now titles uh, at the end um i've put just a little bit of a oh i accidentally dragged that there we go it's very easy to drag things if you're not careful so don't be in a hurry with this be quite gentle with it and it'll then know what you want to do so if i just double click on that for example it opens up my dan baker musician uh, baker, bit of a plug there dan baker hyphen music.com uh, now if i click on that i then have a, a range of options for my text now if i double click 
I end up with a little word processor, which means that you can type stuff and see how it's going to work in your main space without hiding it with your fingers. So you can do that. And then, you know, if I sort of tap another one, blah, 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 et cetera. Now you can also uh, do things like changing the um, the edge color, which is called stroke on Photoshop, for example. You can set the width so it's a bit bit fatter. You can change the color so you get a nice little palette that you can do that. Uh, so masses you can do with that. Um, just go back to that. And go back to my original. So all the undo settings, you know, you, it just exists wherever you like. Now you can have any fonts. You can. The, the possibilities are endless, and although this is a you know a, a, a twenty minute demo or so, you know frankly you can spend hours on this. So I hope that that gives you a bit of an insight into how things work with this program. It's so so clever, um, and as I say, if you do a little bit of pre prep work, deciding if you got those four singers together, just to make that a one camera angle so that you don't s swallow up too much of the capability. Now this is an iPad 2017 fifth generation and here we are nearly at the end of 2019. So there've been quite a few models since this iPad, but as you can see, this one copes really well. Now you have an audio level with every track as well. Now that's useful if you've got cameras that have got audio on them, which most do apart from my one that's broken. And then that means that you can really, if you do everything miming to the speakers, you've got even finer control of how to drag it with respect to your main track. And then, of course, when you've finished, you can mute all of those tracks. There are two audio tracks here because I changed the mix after I'd made the video. I thought, oh, I don't know those vocals there or I need to change something rather than get rid of that, because then that would upset the overall timing. I actually put another track underneath and then muted the first one. So you can you can elect to mute it or you can change the level and you have an overall level control over here. Now, audio wise, if I double click on this, I have my audio here and it automatically brings up some plugins, things like dynamics processor, high pass filter. There's all sorts of things you can do. Now, I put a limiter on this because I wanted to just master the level up a bit. Now, I could have done that within GarageBand and Final Touch, for example, but I forgot. <laughs> so I did it in here instead. So I've actually just put a little bit of pre gain on the vocals, but limited the output to zero dB, which is the maximum that you can have before you get distortion on platforms like YouTube and other places. So that's a little bit about the sound. You could you could sort of um, change the balance from left to right. You know, there are things that you can do. Now, if you go into stuff like the graphic equalizer, you've got all of these sort of things like that you can you can sort of boost or cut a particular frequency uh, at a particular you know narrow band it's very very good there's so much you can do everything's been thought through with this and the instruction manual which is online only is very very good indeed it's written by people that just know how to use stuff and know how to sort of uh, communicate with the outside world so what's not to like about LumaFusion.